I'm Phil Spencer and welcome back to Bonkers for Borough. Middlesbrough are in electric form, having scored 15 goals in their last three matches. A 4-1 win against QPR was followed by a 5-1 win over Luton Town. That was then followed after the international break with a 6-2 victory over Oxford United. And with Blackburn Rovers coming up on Wednesday night, fans will be hoping that Middlesbrough are in a position to hit them for seven to carry on this unprecedented run of form. Unfortunately for Middlesbrough, there are a couple of issues that Michael Carrick is potentially going to be facing um, in the run-up to this match. Now, Middlesbrough do have a uh, quite a hectic run of fixtures coming up. Uh, they've got Blackburn Rovers on Wednesday night and then there's Hull City um, at the Riverside on uh, Saturday. So that's two matches at home um, in quick succession, two real opportunities to, uh, to continue this incredible momentum. Um, that Middlesbrough have been, uh, been building. Um, two teams who are struggling a little bit at the moment, two teams that Middlesbrough will see as beatable uh, and two matches where Middlesbrough will be targeting six points. But um, there will be a number of players who Michael Carrick may not be able to pick from um, going into these matches as, uh, as injuries and, uh, and other things kind of uh, come into play. So um, we'll go into this in, a, in just a, a second. But um, first of all, we're going to start off with Middlesbrough's sickness bug. Uh, because this is something which uh, Middlesbrough fans who've been supporting the club for a number of years, they know that when we play Blackburn Rovers, there always seems to be a sickness bug that uh, comes back to bite us. And that's certainly what's happening here. Now, um, at the weekend, uh, Middlesbrough were playing Oxford United. Uh, and Middlesbrough were without their goalkeeper, Steny Dieng. For that match, it was his birthday on Saturday. Um, and he was ruled out of the match uh, with a, a sickness bug. Um, no biggie. He, he, he dropped out the team. Solbrin came in and Solbrin was excellent. Um, it's, a, it's the reason why you have uh, squad players. It's the reason why you have backups and people who are ready and challenging for, for places in the team. But it seems like that uh, situation has uh, worsened slightly with Michael Carrick um, mentioning that um, a number of players in his squad could be affected by the sickness book. Now, we didn't go into detail um, as to, uh, to necessarily how many players are going to be affected by it. Um, he didn't go into detail on who has been affected by it. But it is a little bit of a worry because what you do find with a... Uh, these sort of sickness bugs is, uh, yes, you might have people who are uh, ruled out of the match altogether, people who uh, just declare themselves not fit, they've been up, up all night throwing up or whatever else, um, and they decide that they're not fit and ready to play. What you also find is you do have people who are past fit and ready to play, but they might not be at 100%. They might be a little bit dehydrated and they might be a little bit tired or a little bit weary or whatever it might sort of be from the sickness book. So these kind of things are a little bit concerning and you, you only really kind of know the um, the knock on effect of, um, of, of how severe they can be. Uh, when you take to the field, really, and you see the other team in the flesh. So that's going to be a really interesting one. I think fans are a little bit in the dark with this as to, as, uh, as to with regards to um, what players are going to be affected by it. Um, it's a reason why in this video I'm not going to be doing a predicted 11 um, for the match against Blackburn because I've just got no idea who has been affected by it and what the sort of situation will be there. But that will be a situation that Middlesbrough will need to monitor carefully. Um, there could be the potential for a number of first-team players to miss out as a result of this sickness bug, and that could be a real problem. Um, Blackburn, they will pose a, a difficult test on Wednesday night and for Middlesbrough. I was saying in jest at the start of this video about uh, scoring seven, not really expecting that to sort of happen. Uh, but um, yes, it's the kind of situation where Middlesbrough will be a little bit wary going into the match if they do have a number of players um, who are feeling slightly under the weather. Now, another player who um, is doubtful for the match against Blackburn Rovers is Ben Doak. Um, as far as we're aware, he's not someone who's been affected by the sickness bug, but he was affected by this uh, rather hefty challenge um, in the match against Oxford United. Um, he uh, he was brought down in the uh, the first half of the match, you know, one middles for a penalty when he was just absolutely taken out um, as he drove into the penalty area. And the, uh, the grab that you've got here is uh, him lying in a crumpled heap on the floor um, off the pitch after being wiped out by the defender. And it's uh, something which has posed um, a little bit of a problem for Ben Doak and for Middlesbrough because it seems like he's picked up a, a bit of an ankle problem. Uh, now, it remains to be seen whether he's going to be fit for the match against Blackburn. Uh, Middlesbrough fans will definitely be hoping um, that it will be available, but um, I guess with so many fixtures coming up over the next few uh, weeks and months, you do need to be a little bit careful, and I think particularly with someone like Ben Doak, um, who has the, the potential to be a game-changer and someone who Middlesbrough really need to try and keep fit at all costs, um, it might be the sort of situation where... Um, Michael Carrick decides to uh, to give him a rest, just give his ankle a bit of a breather and a, a few extra days to uh, to recover. Um, obviously, Middlesbrough do have uh, they, they've got other options within the squad who can play in uh, in that position. Um, as I Jones will be the, the natural 
a replacement for him um, should he be fit and available. And um, you've also got Marcus Force, who is now uh, on his way back to, um, to first team contention. I don't know whether he'd be fit to, uh, to start the game against Blackburn, but that's something that would be um, potentially a consideration. Then you do have the likes of um, the, 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 some of our other attacking players who could potentially slot in on that right-hand side. Finazaz um, could play there. You could see the likes of Delano Bergsorg uh, playing there. If you've got Riley McGree coming back into the team. So there are a number of options there. Um, I think ideally you'd want Ben Doak fit and available to play against Blackburn. Uh, but with so many matches coming up over the next few weeks, you probably do have to be a little bit cautious. And so I do feel like if there's any sort of doubt over just how that uh, how that ankle is going to hold up, um, I do think that Michael Carrick will make the, the cautious decision um, and probably select um, Isaiah Jones to, to come into the uh, the eleven um, in his place. Um, Hayden Hackney is an interesting one. So he was he was part of the um, the, the kind of worry over the international break with uh, a number of injuries coming to bite Middlesbrough. Um, Aidan Morris was the uh, the big one suffering that knee injury uh, while away with the United States. Um, he's going to be out for a, a bit of an extended period of time, which is a massive blow. Um, Hayden Hackney injured his ankle while away with England in the 21s. And I think fans were a little bit worried um, at the start that it could be a, a slightly long-term issue uh, for Hayden Hackney. Uh, but the, the comments from Michael Carrick in his press conferences have been a little bit encouraging. Um, it does seem like Hayden Hackney is someone who isn't uh, too far away. Um, you do get the impression that the ankle injury isn't anything that's too serious, really. So you're kind of expecting that Hayden Hackney could be back sooner rather than later. Um, I think what from based on what Carrick said and from what we sort of know about the injury, it feels like Blackburn could be a bit of a push. For, uh, for Hackney to be involved in, but you can never rule it out. Um, Hayden Hackney could be available to as a feature um, at the Riverside on uh, on Wednesday night, but similar to what we were saying with Ben Doak, uh, with so many uh, matches coming up, I, I think there's a real sort of need to um, to be patient and kind of play the long game, really. I think you've got um, Dan Barlasser and uh, Johnny Housen, who did really well against Oxford, so they'll be uh, like riding high in confidence. Um, they'll be more than ready to play against Blackburn if needed. And so for someone like Hayden Hackney, again, I think he'll only be selected if he's passed fully fit um, to feature against Blackburn because you don't want to take any gambles, particularly with someone like Hayden Hackney who is so, so important to the team. Uh, but personally, I would love to see him back in the team because he's just uh, he's just a brilliant player. He's been one of our most important and most impressive players this term. Um, someone who is undoubtedly a, a must-starter if he is fully fit. Um, and so it's a situation that fans will be uh, monitoring closely uh, for the Blackburn game, but then also for the whole game coming up on Saturday. Um, just because he doesn't feature against Blackburn, if that's the decision that's made, um, doesn't mean that with an extra few days of training and recovery, he won't be ready to play against Tull at the weekend. So that's going to be a really interesting situation to watch. Fans will definitely want him back um, as soon as possible. And uh, you, you just know that Middlesbrough will be and are a better team with Hayden Hackney um, in that central midfield area. Now, this is a, an interesting one that uh, has came out in the uh, the news in the last couple of days with regards to a uh, Ben Doak. Now, uh, we're at the stage of the season where um, like the disciplinary records and that sort of thing uh, become a little bit more prominent. You're kind of like starting to get to the point where players are, um, are watching their uh, their yellow card tally and um, to see how it might affect them. And for Ben Doak, it's a situation which we'll be a little bit anxious about over the next couple of games. He and George Edmondson are both on four yellow cards. Um, for Middlesbrough this season. Now that's um, that's important for a, a couple of different reasons, mainly because when you get to five yellow cards at this point in the season, um, a player is handed a, a, an automatic one match ban for the accumulation of yellow cards. Now this changes slightly in the next week or so because uh, a week on Friday, um, the, the, the night where Middlesbrough are playing uh, Burnley at Turf Moor in the Championship, that match is the threshold for when that, um, that um, I guess that benchmark of, um, of yellow cards accumulated uh, rises. So in order to get a one match ban after that match against Burnley, Middlesbrough players would need to accumulate 10 yellow cards during that time. So in essence, what that means is that for Ben Doak and for George Edmondson, they need to try and avoid getting a yellow card in their next three matches. And um, three matches being against Blackburn Rovers, against Hull City, and then against Burnley. If those players can avoid getting a yellow card in any of those three matches, um, then they should be fine. It means that they'll have until 10 yellow cards before they have to worry about the uh, the impending threat of getting a, a one-match ban. Uh, but if any of those players do pick up a yellow card in any of those three fixtures um, over the next week or so, 
it does mean that they will be facing the other prospect of a one but one uh, one match suspension uh, which could be a, a real problem for them but also for michael carrick as well we've mentioned about how a couple of players are missing through uh, through injury or through illness with the uh, the sickness bug um, and so this is a situation that michael carrick will want to monitor uh, quite closely um you, you've got to say that bookings are part and parcel of the game um, I don't think it'll be any real disaster if, uh, if George Edmondson or Doak do pick up a, a yellow card in these matches because we do have uh, players who can step in and cover. But I think with both of those players being very, very important to, uh, to Michael Carrick's team this season, um, you will be hoping uh, that we can keep those players on the pitch um, and have them available um, through... Um, yeah, through, through their fitness, really. I think you, you want those players on the pitch if they are fit and available to play. Um, you don't want them missing out through suspension because that's just a real blow. And I think for the sake of a yellow card, um, it is a situation where you where you really want them to kind of, I guess, keep a level head and uh, try and, um, yeah, just, I guess, for George Edmondson, stay on his feet, make sure he doesn't make any rash challenges. Ben Doak, once again, just like, similar, really. You, you want him to, uh, to make sure that he doesn't get embroiled in any sorts of battles that he doesn't need to. Uh, because for the sake of a yellow card, you really do want someone like Ben Doak to be fit and available and ready to play in as many matches as possible. You don't want him to be missing a uh, potentially crucial match um, through suspension, uh, let alone if you've got both players suspended um, at the same time as well. That could be a real blow um, for Middlesbrough when we are looking to build momentum going into the winter. So it is just one for, uh, for fans to keep an eye on. You know, like I said, I don't think it'll be a real disaster if either of them do get suspended, uh, but it's certainly something that Michael Carrick will be uh, hoping to avoid if possible um, to make sure that he's got as many players um, fit and available and uh, avoiding suspension as possible so that he can uh, hopefully try and extend this incredible winning run uh, for as long as possible. So the matches against Blackburn and Hull are going to be really quite interesting as far as Middlesbrough are concerned. Um, our form at the moment is excellent. Um, you can see from the other uh, graphic attached where Middlesbrough are in the other uh, championship table. Um, coming into this run of matches, we're currently sitting fifth with uh, 27 points to our name. Uh, we're only five points off the top of the table, which is quite incredible, really, um, considering where we've been and the fact that we've been a little bit off the pace um, during the early part of the season. We're really starting to find form at the best possible time. Now, with so many matches coming up during in the other winter months uh, this table is really going to start taking shape and um, there's going to be a lot of points to play for during that time and so you will start to see little gaps emerging uh, between teams um, not just at the top of the table uh, but throughout the division and so for Middlesbrough it's so so important uh, that we keep winning games not saying that we, we need to win every match or that we need to win every match by five goals or six goals because that's going to be completely unsustainable uh, but if we can keep winning games and keep racking up points on a consistent basis ideally if we can score some goals to keep improving that goal difference because that can be very very important come the uh, come the end of the season as well and um, that can be very very handy but for Middlesbrough we are looking in a really strong position um obviously we've got a Blackburn on Wednesday night they're sitting in the uh, in ninth position um they, they did win quite recently but they have a, a couple of dodgy results as you can see there but a win would take them right back into the playoff push um yeah obviously Middlesbrough will be hoping to get that win which will push them further up the table uh, but yeah there's a couple of tricky matches coming up you know, we mentioned about Hull who are struggling um, coming up on Saturday at the Riverside but then after that you've got you've got Burnley and then you've got Leeds United and obviously you can see in the table just where like where they are and uh, how well they're performing this season so I think for Middlesbrough very very important to keep up this uh, this winning run and um, keep the momentum going going into the winter months because as you can see Middlesbrough are right in there right in amongst the uh, the battle for promotion and that's where we need to be um i think when by the time um, everyone kind of um, comes up for air in maybe february next year and um, you look at the table and where it's really, it's really start to take shape and what you want is for middlesbrough to be in this sort of position you want middlesbrough to be in here maybe fourth or even third really um maybe catching up a little bit with the uh, the four teams who are above them to make sure that they are fully in that promotion battle what we don't want is middlesbrough to be in a position where they're in ninth or tenth position four or five points off the playoffs and going oh well if we can just win our next three matches if we can just turn it around and get these results we could maybe squeeze into those playoff places you want to be fully in and amongst it you want to be one of the teams who have almost already consolidated their top six spot and then they can play with uh, without real source of pressure and um, to challenge for promotion moving forward and um, things are going really well for the club at the moment um, obviously um results weren't particularly great and um, towards the start of the season we're really starting to hit our stride now and so for middle it's just important to try and keep that going where possible and uh, we will lose matches um during this winter month 
uh, during these winter months. Sorry, um, I think it's the uh, it's it's just inevitable with so many games, and there'll be fatigue, and there'll be changes, and as we mentioned, there'll be injuries and sickness and suspension, and there'll be a lot of variables coming into play over the next couple of months. But for Middlesbrough, if they can just keep chipping away at it, keep winning games, keep drawing games, keep just adding points to their uh, to their tally, and um, to keep them in and amongst it, it could be a really really exciting couple of months for Middlesbrough. And based on the way that we're playing at the moment, um, if you're anything like me, you just absolutely chomping at the bit for the next match to come around because we're so so exciting to watch at the moment even defensively we're a little bit frail which is probably a little bit exciting in itself so you do want a situation where Middlesbrough are uh, going out and playing with uh, such a free-flowing attacking style scoring plenty of goals there's always that bit of jeopardy with the fact that we don't seem to be able to keep a clean sheet but that doesn't really matter at the moment when we are scoring as many goals as we are at the moment and um, it's really really fun watching Middlesbrough at the moment and hopefully that will continue as we move into the winter months so um I really want to hear from you and what you think of Middlesbrough at the moment uh obviously we're performing so so well scoring so many goals but how do you think we'll get on against Blackburn and Hull this week? Drop into the comments below. Let me know what you think and let me know whether you think Middlesbrough will be able to uh, continue this winning run. Um, if you are enjoying this video, uh, please do hit like um, and hit subscribe. There's going to be a hell of a lot more Middlesbrough content coming um, over the coming weeks with so many matches coming up. Um, so drop into the comments, hit subscribe, and I will catch you next time.